So why do you think people are so fascinated about extraterrestrial contact? Well, um, I think the reason why, it's, why that's happening right now, it's because humans are starting to tap into the fact that within their own genetic makeup, they hold different um, sort of composition that is not origin, that it's not from Earth just, but also from the stars. So I think that subconsciously and unconsciously, we're just starting to want and wish to reconnect with that aspect of ourselves that his has been dormant or forgotten for a long time so far now and that it's time for us as we have chosen so to awaken again and establish that connection yeah i've, I've had a few of my friends have kind of waken up to that uh, consciousness myself i've never had that experience yet but i mean i talk about an experience i did have and maybe you can help me out through this but i know a lot of my friends uh she started connecting with the palladians and when she told me that i was like okay really and she <laughs> goes yeah like she was having all these downloads all these crazy visions all this stuff happening and she was telling me and i was like wow this is this is interesting but a, part of my brain was going really really and but i realize now but more and more people like yourself are having these experiences. So when was the first experience that you had? Do you, when was the first recollection that you had this connection with the uh, extraterrestrials? Um, it was, well, really it was when I was uh, very little, but those experiences were, um, those memories were wiped out for me for the purpose of not, um, let's say, interfering with my life and distracting me so that I could go um, go strive for with my life and my um, focus on my everyday things and natural development of my consciousness until I was about 15 or 16. That is when I decided to um, start my spiritual awakening and reconnect to all this information that uh, it was left behind, you know. And so that it was waiting for me to be downloaded, you know, to my consciousness again for the mission and the purpose that I have as a star seed. So that's when I started to become super interested uh, in UFO, UFO topics, you know, like ufology and ET contact and spirituality. And that's when all these experiences started to happen consciously, you know, and I will remember um, past experiences. Too. Yeah. So with, with, when you were remembering this, is it during your dreams or your dream states or during meditation that this were happening? Um, it, it usually mostly happened to me well, when I would go to sleep as astral experiences. Uh, they look like dreams with the difference that it's a lucid dream because you're conscious, you're aware, and you can um, choose what to communicate to other beings because it's a real experience. It's not this the dream state, let's say. It's not a reality. It's higher astral reality in which you are operating from a higher, let's say, level of consciousness. Yeah. So how do we get to that higher level of consciousness? I know a lot of people, I know a lot of us, most of us do astral travel when we sleep. I think a lot of people don't realize that even when you're dreaming, like you do leave your body and you don't, you're not bound by the physical realities that we know of. And you travel to different planets, different dimensions, things like that. And how do we start evolving this type of consciousness that we become more aware that we may be astral traveling and maybe connecting to these higher dimensional beings? Uh, well, we need to understand that consciousness is a fractal structure and it, it's in its fractal nature um we're always expressing ourselves in all these different uh, levels of consciousness no matter what you know the only difference is that there is a disintegration of perception of those other higher levels of consciousness you know so that we can focus on our physical life and uh, through the perspective, let's say, or um, reality uh, structure that we have created as an experience here in the physical reality for the matter of the explosion of our, um, let's say, spiritual challenges and spiritual topics, ideas, you know. Um, so understanding that when we start to wake up in the lower in the lower levels of consciousness here and understand that this is a dream 
by itself that is just, we are also dreaming when we are awake in a sense it's that um sort of like metaphor um and we start to reconnect our physical awareness with the higher levels of consciousness and um let's say conscious a mechanism all these laces all these uh harmonics that we establish with these other higher frequency patterns of our consciousness start to give us more access to all these different dimensional interdimensional higher aspects of our consciousness and ourselves yeah i mean uh, i think it's just so fascinating there um so what if you had to describe what's the difference between like an extraterrestrial and an uh, extra dimensional is that the word extra dimensional yes well yeah. the what's difference is yeah, um, the difference is that an extra dimensional being, it's actually a really general, um, let's say, label, because I could be a human, or I could be from Earth, let's say, but at the same time, I could be interdimensional, you know, I could exist in a different uh, dimension, and that will be my place of origin and experience, focus, um, focus of experience, you know. Whilst an extraterrestrial is any consciousness or entity that is expressing itself in another planetary conscious matrix, like, you know, any other planet or star system, you know, with different genetic makeup. Okay. Yeah, because I've always found it fascinating. And I was I always find it a little bit confusing, too, because, you know, I started hearing about, you know, everybody's heard the expression ETs, right? We all kind of get yes. that. But then I was hearing extra dimensional. It's like, okay. It's like, what is that? Like, I mean, that sounds so cool, but then it's like, are, aren't they the same thing? But, you know, in some ways it isn't and it isn't. And I find it so fascinating um, about this. And it's just a, such a, so much to know. Like, I mean, I, the, one of the things I find confusing is just so much information out there about all the different systems, all the different uh, energies out there, the different um, star seeds, you know, where we're from, the celestial origins and things like that. So maybe you can help us kind of walk us through this because I have a lot of my uh, listeners are newbies to this and I want to kind of give them a little introduction without kind of them going, really? Yeah, I want them to make sure that they fully understand it. So I, one of the things I want to talk about is star seeds. Now I've had a, uh, an episode about star seeds, but I wanted to hear what your perception of what a star seed is. Sure. Uh, well, the general explanation to what a star seed is it's basically a consciousness that has originated in another star system that has chosen to incarnate to take an incarnation on earth now i find this perspective a little bit let's say primitive or old paradigm because it's just not really accurate with the actual dynamics or of like metaphysics you know uh or it's just too um superficial you know let's say um because it's focusing on the fact that souls have an origin and I do not believe that because any soul, any entity, any consciousness has always existed and it will always exist because we're infinite beings. That's the law of existence, you know. Energy doesn't get create, you know, it doesn't create energy or destruct energy, but rather it transforms itself to something different, you know. So following that law of nature, this also applies to consciousness. Consciousness is infinite. So we really didn't originate it here on there, you know. Um, what can happen is that we have had more lives, linearly speaking, because time is an illusion. Linearly speaking, what could have been, what could have happened is that we had m much more lives, you know, in other star systems, and then we decided that our next life will be on Earth, you know. Um, but really, what a star city is, because you could have had thousands of lives here or hundreds you know, of incarnations here on Earth and still be considered a star seed. Because from my point of view, what a star seed is, is uh, as humanity is hybrids with extraterrestrial DNA and hominid DNA. It was created based on a hybridization agenda between cosmic beings, beings that came from other star systems and the natives, indigenous uh, hominids from this planet, you know. Okay. Um, humans in general possesses that sort of um genetic genetic make extraterrestrial ancestry you know okay genetic heritage so stars it really stars it's really what they are it's those souls who because of genetic compatibility they incarnate on those lineages that have a higher per percentage of that extraterrestrial component in the genetic makeup of humans and so not only because of that physical heritage that they express higher consciousness but they own i mean their own genetic um soul metaphysical material 
that it is so uh, it is much more extraterrestrial in, in let's say connections so that when it incarnates that mix between the physical dna and the metaphysical dna makes it so that the the vessel these um let's say the structure the personality structure the vessel can express more of that higher consciousness it's much more conductive of those higher frequencies 